Today I'm going to show you how to do a standard click to reveal with force navigation. Okay, so I've done this video before, but what happens uh, if you're like me, of course, is over time you'll learn new things and and change your your best practices on how you do things. The result might be the same, but you know my current way of developing one of these interactions uh, has slightly changed over time. Uh, I'm going to add a twist to this particular video as well. We're going to do this with responsive design. So you can see what uh, some of the decisions that I make uh, when I'm working on a project that, that needs to be responsive design as well. So let's take a look at my screen here. You can see that I've already placed a lot of the content. I've decided to do something very simple, uh, just a click to reveal on three important uh, political people here in Canada. What I've done is I've brought in images of all of these people here, as you can see here, and I have a smart shape that's actually a multi-state object. If we go into state view, you can see I've got a little bit of a bio from each of these people here. I have a button for all three of them over here. They're just smart shapes used as buttons. One thing I have done is I've added a selected state. So this isn't an inbuilt state with Adobe Captivate. You can simply add your own states here and when you uh, set those up, you can give them their own name. In this case, selected will be very obvious that it's selected. It'll turn green and the text is white. So it'll really stand out from the other buttons. I also have back and next buttons here. And I have a next button here as well. And I've already set it up to not be visible in output because what I want to do is only have it seen once the learner has completed the interaction. There's some debate whether there's value in this or not, but typically I've found in my experience is that stakeholders will request force navigation. They want to make sure that they've done their due diligence, especially when there's compliance training and legislation behind it. So let's go ahead and start building it. So the first thing I need to think about is where are all these objects going to be? Uh, incidentally, the three images will actually end up being one object and they will be a multi-state object. So let's make sure I've got my spelling correct here. Always important. So the first thing I typically will like to do is I'll create uh, vertical uh, fluid boxes, typically three, and there'll be a place up top for perhaps my title or description. So I'm going to go to my position panel, make this a lot smaller. Uh, we'll go with 10% for today. And the bottom one is where my arrows for back and next will go. I'll give it the same 10%. So I'll give myself a nice large area in the middle where my content will reside. So now you want to think about what the content in the middle is going to look like. How are you going to display this, uh, this material that's going to be available to your learners? One of the things that you can do is just kind of lay it out as you think it might be appropriate. Let's unlock these from fluid boxes and just place the content uh, roughly where you think it would go or where it would make sense, perhaps for a desktop view. Uh, in this case here, I'm just going to place this roughly over where it's going to snap in. I'll add um, the image of one of my, again, unlocking the uh, image from fluid boxes. Place that, you know, roughly where I think it might go. And uh, let's do the same thing for my multi-state object. So if I decide to divide this up, for starters with two fluid boxes and wrap to another row, the description will go down below. In this case, I don't know if I, I really care for that idea too much. I like the idea of the image being on top. So I'm going to put that over here. And I think what I'll do is put the description below the image on the left. Again, this is all going to get resized by the fluid boxes themselves. 
and maybe have the buttons to the right so that they actually appear down below. Uh, when you know you click on those, the the image up top will change. So let's let's start to build this. So I'm going to select that middle fluid box. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to divide it this way. Leave it wrapped to next row so that when the screen gets down to a smaller size, the image will stay up top, perhaps with the description to the right, and then the buttons will be down below next to your other navigation controls. So let's go ahead and select our buttons. Uncheck Unlock from Fluid Box, and we'll snap those into place. Now, to look like buttons, you're probably going to want to give them a little space around each other. So I'm going to select the Fluid Box that they're within, and we'll just add 10 pixels all the way around each of them. I am going to uncheck Maintain Aspect Ratio so that they fill as much space as is available to them. Also, too, we can start to snap these objects uh, into place here. So we'll put this one on the first fluid box. I'm going to uncheck Maintain Aspect Ratio. And ultimately, I'm going to have a multi-state object with the image of Justin Trudeau. So I'm going to first of all uh, select him. And I'm going to open up my alignment toolbar and just move him right to the top so I can select him easily. And we will uncheck Unlock from Fluid Box and snap him into this Fluid Box. So they're on top of one another. Uh, that might be a good choice. I'm going to leave Wrap to Next Column uh, in place here. We also have our title up top or our description. So we'll snap that to the first Fluid Box. Again, I'm going to uncheck Maintain Aspect Ratio. And I have my navigation controls down at the bottom here. And we're going to uncheck Unlock from Fluid Box. And I'll drag those right into that bottom Fluid Box there. They're backwards, but I'll fix those in a moment. Let's first of all look at what happens uh, with the different layouts that are going to occur. So that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that the image becomes smaller. I think for the, uh, the first Fluid Box, I'm going to align these to the top. So if it does get small, the image will be to the sort of an inset top left there. I think I'll change this bottom fluid box to be, to squeeze those in a column. We'll keep them on top of one another. For down here, let's go with squeeze in a row and we'll select space around so that there's a little space. And obviously we want to move the back button to the left and the right button to the right. And uh, that's pretty good. I think I like that layout. Now, the first thing I'm going to do with the uh, image of Justin Trudeau, let's go into State View. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the image. And my initial state um, is I don't want him visible when we first arrive on the slide. So I'm going to bring the alpha channel all the way down to zero. Click OK. And now I'm going to create two additional states. So we'll type in Justin Trudeau. We'll create a state for Christian Freeland. And I'll make a state for Harjit Sajan. So for the Justin Trudeau image, let's edit the image again. Bring that alpha channel all the way back up to 100. For the Krista Freeland, we're going to click on the button for that particular image and change it to the Krista Freeland image. And for Harjit, we'll do the same thing there as well. So we have all of the options there in our multi-state object. So I'm going to exit the state. One of the things we want to do is give it a proper name. So politician image. And you want to make sure that your description, your profile, is given a proper name. I had one here from before. Uh, profile of politician. I can actually delete these extra images. I don't need those any longer here. So let's just take a look at what this looks like. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So now I need to write some advanced actions 
and create some variables to keep track of what's been done. Uh, when you do force navigation, if you're going the route where you're going to be executing several different commands, advanced actions are definitely the way to go here. So I'm going to start with Justin Trudeau's button here. We'll go to the Actions tab and we'll execute advanced actions. And we don't have any advanced actions written so far, so I'm going to click on the advanced action icon and we'll start writing our first advanced action here. So we'll call this uh, Justin Trudeau. And you need to think about, and I do this very much one step at a time, so I think about what do I need to do? Well, I'm going to need to keep track of the fact that I've clicked on this button before. If I'm going to uh, disable and then enable or hide the next button and then display it. So we're going to need some user variables. So I'm going to click on the variables uh, window here and add a Justin Trudeau variable. Hit save. I'm also going to create a variable for each of the other political leaders since I'm in here anyway. I like to just put an underscore in front of them. That way when I'm looking at my list of all my user variables, they're all grouped together as one. So we'll hit save there. So now I have my three user variables. Click close. And so when you click on Justin Trudeau, the first thing I'm going to want to do is to assign Justin Trudeau with the literal value of one. So later I can recall that we've already pressed his particular bio, displayed it, and uh, we know that that's part of this interaction that has been completed. The next thing we want to do is we want to change the state of button one to selected. And remember, there's two other buttons as well. So I'm going to change the state of button two to normal and change the state of button three to normal. So we're returning any previous selections back to normal and making sure that the Justin Trudeau button is highlighted at this point here. The other thing we need to do is to change the state of our politician images over to Justin Trudeau and change the state of our profile of the politician, in this case to option one. I should have called it Justin Trudeau, but that's fine. So we've basically taken care of what needs to be done for the simple changing and selecting of one of the three people that are on this page. The last thing we need to do is to check if all of these particular political leaders have been displayed. We're going to make sure that we show that next button so that users can move on from this slide. So we're going to go to our second tab here because we need to do a separate conditional tab or a conditional action. Uh, so for this first one, I'm just going to call this Justin Trudeau. For this one here, we'll call this tab check if complete. So we're checking if this interaction is complete. We need to do a conditional tab. And what that is, is just we're checking the value of something, in this case three somethings, to see if they've all been assigned a value of one, or in other words, they've all been clicked. So we're going to say if the variable Krista Freeland is equal to the literal value one and Harjeet Sajan has been set to a literal value of one and Justin Trudeau is equal to a literal value of one then we're going to show our next button. And at this point, I'll just pause for a moment and emphasize that you really start to see the importance of labeling all your objects when writing advanced actions. I don't know if I said that already, but as you're building your interactions, give everything a proper label because it's real easy to find something called the next button but if the next button was simply labeled Smart Shape 473, who knows, right? So 
this is pretty good to go. We can save this as an action, click OK, and click Close, and make sure that Justin Trudeau is pointing at the Justin Trudeau Advanced Action. We'll do something similar with Krishja Freeland. We'll start off with Execute Advanced Actions. And you might think, well, geez, this is going to take a while because it took me a while to write that first one. The real advantage here is there's very little for me to change to the existing advanced action to create a new advanced action. So let me click on this folder icon and we're going to start by duplicating this whole interaction. We'll give it a new name. We'll change the name of our tab here and we're just going to change which variable we're pointing to. So in this case, Christian Freeland and we're going to change the previous button one back to normal and because she's button two we'll make her button selected we'll change the politician image to krista freeland and we'll choose the description to option two and there's really nothing for me to change over here so i can simply update this action click ok click close and then make sure that I point my script to the newly created Christian Freeland script. And that's it. And I'll repeat that one more time for Harjeet. So duplicate the script for, in this case, Christian Freeland. And I'll relabel the action name as well as this first tab. And make sure we're pointing to the right variable. We'll change Christian's button back to normal and make sure that Harjeet is selected. We'll change the image over to Harjeet. And the third option is what we want for the profile description. Update this advanced action, click OK, click closed, and make sure that we're pointing at the newly created script. So let's do a preview of this project in HTML5. This is a responsive design project, so HTML5 is going to be the default choice here. And let's take a look at what this looks like. So here we have, you can see that my next button is not visible. If we scroll this uh, across to see what this is gonna look like on other device sizes, looks good for a smartphone. Let's test this out and see how it works. So the rollover effect is nice. We'll select Justin Trudeau and it shows the selected image. We see the image of Justin Pierre James Trudeau and his description there. We'll click on Krista Freeland next and that updates appropriately. And then Harji Sejen. Perfect. And now our next button is available. So we have a perfectly working click to reveal interaction. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.